Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. LEGO is releasing a whole range of Formula Racing sets this March, I will be reviewing them all in details, don't worry. The first one we are introducing here is something very special, is the LEGO Icons 10330 McLaren MP44 and Ayrton Senna set. This is a legendary car with a legendary driver. Let's see if LEGO has managed to do them justice in this icon set. We see the race car on the front of the box with the minifigure, the black design fits this time. A stand is revealed on the back of the box, with some details of the build and also the dimensions. Let's open it. The set has 693 pieces, the price is 80 euros or dollars. All local prices and pre-order options can be found via the link at the top right corner or in the description. We get 6 numbered bags, the sticker sheet, 4 wheels and the manual. Oh boy, those wheels, we will have to talk about them a lot later. In the manual, we first get some information about the model that was one of the most successful Formula 1 car designs of all time. On the following pages we see photos and some information about Senna, who really was one of the most iconic drivers in history. Then we get a comparison photo, with a few words from the LEGO design team. Here's the parts list if you are interested, now let's start building. First we need to assemble the minifigure. He's got a nice printed racing suit, a trophy in one hand, and a tricky accessory to hold his helmet in the other. We also build a nice podium with a quote from Senna on it. Building the car starts with this big piece, which is new for 2024. This assembly below is a nice nod to the national flag of Brazil, Senna's home country. We extend the base with some larger elements and then start building a representation of the legendary Honda V6 turbo engine. A few more parts and that's the end of bag 1. Bag 2 starts with some challenging technique pieces and then we see some very exciting brand new parts designed specifically for this set. The look of the axles becomes much more accurate with these parts, but if we dig a little deeper, they may be a bit too specific for general use. The cross axles at the ends appear to have been designed to be fixed, with no functional suspension parts and no movement, and the width of 4 modules isn't going to be easy to accommodate in the world of LEGO Technic as it is mostly based on odd numbers. We have simulated drive shafts that aren't connected to anything, but it's an icon set so I think that's perfectly fine. Here comes the assembly with the upper wishbones, it's a bit tricky as a lot of pins and ball joints have to be connected at the same time, but eventually it's in place. The suspension is fixed, there is some flex in the plastic, but that's all. Building the side pods with Brazilian colors again, but they are covered by that big slope that gets the shell sticker. This assembly goes here, and the body shaping continues towards the rear. We add a few more details to the engine and finish this stage with another pair of shell logos. I'm still surprised to see this part in light bluish grey, even though it's not new. We are building a Technic base for the front axle, and here comes this tricky assembly that will give us working steering in this small space. It's not connected to anything yet, but I think we will see it soon. <laughs> yeah, pretty soon actually, here's the steering axle. This nose piece is brand new and this is also our first printed element that helps to lock the front section. A bit more engine detail and even more chrome parts. The minifigure sextant is an ingenious part usage for the instruments to control the front anti-roll bar stiffness, it looks very similar. Now it's time to slot in the steering wheel, yes we have functional steering. We add pieces for the seat, then the area around the cockpit is covered. The next stage is to add some fairly precise details to the rear, then comes another printed piece. The windshield has several smaller transparent pieces on the sides, and here's the center one that's also printed, which I didn't notice in the press photos before. We also put some gauges behind the steering wheel. The front wing is more complex than you might think, because it consists of many small parts and layers. I often don't understand how the decision is made between stickers and prints. The Shell and McLaren logos seem almost the same on very similar white tiles, I really don't know what the difference is in this case. Another nice printed element that comes to the front here. This was a heavily criticized section at the reveal, we will come back to it later. The rear wing is pretty cool for a couple of reasons. First of all, we have this printed tile here, but another layer with half the print comes on top, and then we attach the two sections with tobos to get the required angle, very nice. I also like how the side panels are attached, a clip down here, a stud connection up there, and it's done. In bag 5 we extend the rear axle, then we build a quite clever assembly here to give the engine even more detail. This actually turned out pretty authentic for the scale. Tricky little 1x1 plates printed on the edge, this will be the engine cover. 
At this stage it's still a bit fragile, so it might be better to build it on the table. I'm sure people will ask why we are adding printed 1x1 plates here if the printing is hidden, aren't they more expensive? Well, sometimes it's better from a logistical point of view to use more of the printed tasks that are already included in the set rather than adding unprinted pieces because that's another new type to use here. The engine cover has a nice shape and fits perfectly. Here are the rear view mirrors, then the front axles and it's time to take a closer look at the wheels. Brand new design, one piece, you can take them apart, they have a rubbery surface but they are hard as a rock, just listen. They are similar to the new generation of Speed Champions wheels, which are also one piece, but there the reasoning was that the rubber layer was too thin to remove and handle, well I'm sure that's not the case here. I mean, it looks pretty cool, but I'm sure everyone has already realized the biggest mistake, we have four identical wheels in the box. And if we put them on, it doesn't really get any better. According to the manual, they've developed the new wheels that are super fast to remove or reattach. Well, if you know what they mean, please let me know in the comments. I don't see much difference. The front wheels come off with the axle and since we have to put those half bushes on, I'm not sure what the speed difference is supposed to be. We build a stand in the last bag, it's fairly quick and looks quite good. Here we still have to apply the giant sticker and the last thing we have is this assembly with Technic connectors and we can mount the car, the build is finished. So here's the car in all its glory. I think it looks great at first glance. The new suspension pieces definitely improve the look, but as always, the devil is in the details. I really cannot unsee those skinny rear tires, to me they completely ruined that section. I mean, look at this photo in the back of the manual. And now, let's see photos of the real car again. The difference between the front and rear tires is massive, the rims at the rear were more than 40% wider. Honestly, I don't understand how this design was approved by the license partners and what was the reason for ignoring the size difference, especially after going to the trouble of designing a brand new wheel for the set. Sorry for the rant folks, but to me this is the biggest flaw of the set that was so close to being great. I know there are other complaints such as the flat nose, but I'm not sure how the curvature of the original could have been better represented at this scale, especially with prints. Yes, the color of the white print on red bricks is still very different compared to the white bricks, this is a flaw of the system, not specific to the set. And then there's the other elephant in the room, which is the lack of Marlboro branding. I read a lot of comments at the reveal, including some very extreme ones. My personal opinion is this. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to complain about a change if it means a tobacco brand isn't represented on a toy. Yes. Lego is still a toy brand, regardless of the age recommendation on this particular box. As far as I know, you can't even advertise these brands by law in many countries these days. If you look at the official super expensive replica in the F1 merch store or the historical section on the McLaren website, the branding is not on the car. Now let's see the MP44 along with some other icons and creator expert cars. The scale this time is 1 13th, which is pretty close to the other sets, although LEGO isn't sticking to a fixed scale for this team. Let's talk a bit about the price. It's 80 euros or dollars, some say that's expensive for the piece count. We don't have any similar vehicles in the portfolio at the moment, the closest was the Fiat 500 I think. That one still had more parts for 80 euros or 90 dollars, but honestly, it didn't feel much bigger and in terms of build experience and complexity, I definitely prefer the Formula 1 set. With the custom minifigure and stand, I think the pricing is in line with the other Icons vehicle sets. You will of course be able to buy it cheaper, there are already pre-orders for only 62 euros. You always ask me where I can find these, this one is at ProShop, you can find the link in the description. So, let's sum it up. I think this set is a great tribute to this iconic car and its driver. I like the overall look and there are many great design solutions. There are a few technical details we could complain about and the biggest flow is still the rear tire. But I will definitely fix that soon, keep an eye on the channel. I think it will do well amongst the other similar LEGO cars on my shelf. Please let me know your thoughts folks in the comment section. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications because more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.